So in this tutorial, we're going to look at some ideas surrounding probability, uh, the basics of things uh, and some notation and what happens when you have one trial. Okay, a trial is an experiment. It's just something uh, which involves probability. If you have more than one trial, we call that combined probability and there is a separate tutorial on that. Okay, now before we start, there is quite a lot of notation uh, to look at and you might want to pause the video and just read through it. But very briefly, we call uh, things events, okay, and we usually use a capital letter to denote those, and an event is simply something that might happen. And then if we put a dash next to the capital letter, that's not A, or not the event. In other words, A does not happen. So if the event A was uh, a head when you toss a coin, then the event not A would be a tail. We use this notation here for the probability that A happens, so P brackets A, you might write P brackets head or something, and then this notation here just means the number of times that A happens, or indeed might happen. And then this funny squiggle, which you might recognize from uh, Venn diagrams and set notation, is the set of all the things that might happen in any given trial or experiment. And you should know, I hope, that the total probability in any given trial or experiment is 1. And there we go, the probability that anything might happen equals 1. If we want to estimate probability from an experiment, we can say that the probability of A is equal to, or approximately equal to, the number of times that A has happened over the number of times that anything happened. And we'll come to that in question 2. So, uh, if we rearrange that, we can estimate the number of outcomes we might see uh, and the number of outcomes of A is the number of ways that anything can happen or the number of trials if you like times the probability that A happens and that's actually quite intuitive and we'll see that working later. And then there is one rule we need to think about and that is if you ever use the word or in your probability uh, that means plus and I will just say that's only for things called mutually exclusive events. That just means that two things can't happen at the same time. So head and tail would be mutually exclusive events. Right, let's have a look at this first question. We have the classic biased spinner and it has four letters A, B, C and D. And some of the probabilities are given in this table. So the probability of A is 0.1, the probability of B is 0.3. And then we're given one more piece of information, which is that spinning a C is twice as likely as spinning a D. And we're asked to complete the probability table. Okay, well, let's give ourselves uh, some letters to work with. Let's call the probability of D, I don't know, let's call it P for probability, shall we? And if that were to go in um, this bit of the table here, I'm going to leave a space for the actual answer in a minute, um, then the probability of C is twice that, so it's 2P. And we're going to use um, the fact that the total probability in any situation is 1, so we can say that, let's write that down as the probability of anything happening, okay, equals 1, and so we simply add up the four probabilities we've got now, and they must equal 1. So 0 0.1 plus 0 0.3 plus 2p, which is the probability that c is achieved, plus p, which is the probability that we get a d, and that equals 1. And we've got a little equation in d to solve. 0.1 plus 0.3 is uh, 0.4, and 2p plus p is 3p, and that equals 1. And then we just solve the equation in the normal way, so we subtract 0.4 from both sides to get the p bit on its own, which gives me 3p equals 0.6, and if I divide both sides by 3, that gives me the answer that I'm looking for, that p equals 0.2. And now I can fill in my probability table, so 2p is 0.4, and p is 0.2, and I have completed my probability table. 
Now we have John spinning the spinner, and he does it 80 times. And we're asked to find an estimate for the number of times he spins an A or a B. Now that word or should immediately make us think of plus down there in key point five. And we're also estimating the number of outcomes, so we need to use this formula here. And so we can say the number of ways of getting an A or a B is the number of ways that anything can happen, which is 80, because that's how many times we've spun it, times the probability of A or B. Now, what is the probability of A or B? Well, I did say that or is plus. So we take the two probabilities and we add them together. So there's the probability of A, that's 0.1, plus the probability of B, which is 0.3. And A and B are mutually exclusive because they can't happen at the same time. And if you work that out, you get 32. So on 32 of the 80 occasions, we would expect an A or a B. Obviously, that's only an estimate. Right, let's move on to a second question. This time, John is joined by Kevin and Lawrence, and they each toss the same biased coin a number of times. And here's their results. Okay, we've got heads and tails, John, Kevin and Lawrence, and we see uh, what they've done. Lawrence looks at his figures and he says, ah, so the probability of tossing a head is three quarters, because it's 30 out of 40. Uh, and let's explain why Lawrence's estimate is likely to be the least reliable of the three. Well, if you just look at it, Lawrence is obviously a little lazy, because Kevin has tossed it many more times, and John has also tossed it more times. So, we can just say that in some way. Okay, so Lawrence tossed the coin the fewest number of times. Okay, and that is why his estimate is likely to be the least reliable. Uh, the more times you toss the coin, the more reliable the estimate of the probability. So there we go. Right, now what about part B? It says use all the results to find a better, better estimate for the probability of a head. And we're asked to leave our fraction, leave our answer as a fraction in its lowest terms. So let's do that. Now, here's the one thing we haven't used yet. Estimating probability, the probability that something happens is the number of times it can happen over the number of times that anything happens. So the probability of getting a head, we can estimate to be the number of heads over the number of anything, which is, of course, heads and tails. Okay, or heads or tails, if you like. If we're going to add these things together. Let's be consistent and call that or. So here we go. The number of heads is uh, 47 plus 78 plus 30. And that we divide that by, well, again, 47 plus 78 plus 30, because that's the number of heads, plus 32 plus 51 plus 10, and that gives me 155 over 248. But we do need to cancel that down, and in fact, it cancels down very neatly to give 5 eighths. How you do that is up to you. I used a calculator. So there we go. Don't forget to learn your notation and the basic rules of Probability. Good luck with that.